So today we're going to smoke brisket. Um, there's lots of videos out there on YouTube telling you how to smoke brisket, and how to trim brisket, and how to inject it, and whether you do fat side up or down. There's lots of edutainment videos out there on brisket. I watch them all the time. This one is just short and sweet. This is uh, building a fire, managing that fire during the day with two briskets in an offset trailer smoker. I'm cooking some bologna at the same time. We're going to pay attention to the fundamentals. We're not going to get crazy with anything, and we're going to turn. We're going to end up with two really, really, really good briskets. Um, so let's get started with this. First thing I like to do is start the fire. It takes a while, a good hour, for that to burn down to the uh, bed of coals that I prefer, which is a really, really hot, completely burning bed of coals. So it takes about an hour. I'm using some paper towels and some oil here. They work really well as a fire starter. That oil wicks into that towel and burns a long time, that paper toweling. And I'm going to build what's called a log cabin fire on top of this. Just going back and forth uh, with the wood. It leaves a lot of air space in there so that the fire can get going pretty fast. And then my next step after I get this lit is to spray some oil on the outside of my firebox. It's just good management and maintenance for the firebox. It'll get rusty otherwise. It's been several cooks, and you can see it's starting to rust on the outside. So you just oil it up, and that'll polymerize on there and make a good seasoned coating for several more cooks. And now we can go inside because this fire is doing its thing. This is just a few minutes later, and you can see how that paper towel is still down there, and all that oil is burning really hot. These are USDA Choice Packer Briskets. Got them at uh, Sam's. And the way I trim a brisket is this is the meat side. The other side is called the fat side. On the meat side, I remove almost all the globs of fat that there are. Uh, I want only meat sitting down on that grate if possible. So, I mean, you don't have to get crazy with it. You, don't, you could throw this whole brisket on the smoker just like this and you'd have a great product. You just have a lot of extra fat. Uh, and no one wants that. So it's best to trim them first. Then I like to go around the edge where there's any oxidized or discolored meat at all and just cut it off and clean it up. Any little tiny thin parts of meat that are sticking up, little flags like that, I like to cut them off because they'll just burn up. They're not good. And I like to round over the edges. Makes a nice consistent product. You can see I'm just cutting off all anything discolored and any large chunks of fat that I see. I'm going to go ahead and remove those. I don't want to cut down into the seams of fat and leave pockets or anything like that. Um, just a good, easy trim. Then on this side, the fat side, I want to take the big globs of fat off that I can reach with a knife on the, on the point. That's the point over there on the left, and the flat is on the right side. And then when I'm trimming the flat side over there where all that fat is, I just want to take it down to about a quarter inch of fat. This had like three quarters of an inch, so I'm having to, you know, trim off fat. It's very easy to do, though. Use a sharp knife, and the knife will do everything you tell it to. And now we're pretty much done. All cleaned up. There's this little part over here that's very thin. I usually round it off. Um, it's not wasting anything because that is just going to burn up in there anyway. See how thin it is? It's like three-eighths of an inch thin. It's just, it's not worth having on there. Some briskets, it's thicker. In this one, it was thin, so I cut it off. And now we're going to inject it. Um, we're going to use a Made in Oklahoma product made by... Um, uh, a, a really, really good company. This is Butcher Barbecue. This is their in brisket injection. I also use their pork injection when I'm doing Boston Butts. I've used a lot of injections. This is by far my favorite. I think you do gain a lot of flavor by injecting your brisket first. It's very, very easy thing to do. This is just a Walmart injector. I don't go crazy and buy an expensive stainless steel job or anything like that. And then you just go in every few inches and push the needle in, and you'll see it kind of sprays everywhere. This is messy. Um, and so what I like to do is put my hand over the hole and it just keeps it from kind of going all over the counter and everything. But then every few inches just go in with the grain is how I do it. I don't know that it matters. And then there'll be a lot of injection that kind of runs out and is on the outside of the product, but that's okay. That's where the dry rub will stick. It kind of acts as a, a glue for the dry rub. So that thing's fully injected. And I'm going to use Payne County Rust. This is my own product, so I'm extremely biased, but this is what I consider to be the very best beef dry rub I've ever used. I use it on all beef products. If I'm cooking burgers or steaks or obviously brisket, I don't add any sugar. I just use Payne County Rust. I use lots of other people's products. I don't just use my own. 
but when it comes to a beef dry rub, I only use Payne County Rust. This is Bar S Bologna. It comes in a five pound log at Walmart. It is $6.98. It's very inexpensive. And when you smoke bologna, as I said before, if you've never had smoked bologna, it is really worth a try. It, it tastes a lot different than the preconceptions. Um, like when you think of cold cut bologna, it just tastes a lot different. I cut it from pole to pole, and then it, uh, then I cut it from pole to pole again and into quarters. And then I go ahead and score all three sides of those triangles that we've made. Uh, and that will allow the bologna to open up as it cooks without tearing. It's going to want to expand as it cooks, and this kind of tells it where to do so. And then as that it opens up, more smoke can adhere down in those cracks, and it makes the, the product more attractive when we slice it. There are four quarters here. Uh, you'll notice there are six quarters in the smoker in a minute. It's not because bologna breeds when you put it inside a smoker. Um, I just had some extra that I'm going to put on. These are my half-inch bar stock grates that I build for my smokers. They're heavy-duty, they're very thick, but they hold a lot more heat and they're easy to clean. I like half-inch bar stock for my grill grates. It doesn't matter. Any grill grate will work. Always brush them off. Use a poly brush, not a steel one. Those little steel pieces can get in your food and really cause some damage. Then I like to oil down the grates and then wash them off with a paper towel. So the grates are nice and polished and ready for product. And it's been about an hour, an hour and a half, and you can see that bed of coals is extremely hot. Uh, when we put our wood on there, it's going to ignite almost immediately. This is the kind of coal bed that we want to nurture during the day. All our heat now is coming from this coal bed plus the wood that we put on top. With a complete burn like this, like I've said before, and we'll continue to reiterate, syringol and glycol and nitric acid are all very, very prevalent, and that's what we want for uh, a good smoke ring from the nitric acid and CO that's in that smoke and those gases, and that syringol and glycol are the oils that are being produced as those lignans are polymerizing in that high heat environment. So we got a good complete burn going on. The smoke chamber is starting to heat up. It's time to put the product on the racks. I'm going to arrange the bologna over there to the right just so I can take it off. It comes off in three or three and a half hours. Bologna is a pre-cooked product, but uh, it only so it only has to smoke three or three or four hours. You can you can do less or more than that. It's up to you. But you'll see what this looks like at that time. And then I'll put the briskets over on the left where I can get to them really easily with spray. I won't be touching these the entirety of their smoke. I just want them to sit exactly where they are, fat side up. It's a windy day. Sometimes with a windy day like this, it's hard to keep your smoker temperature just perfect. But with a big, heavy smoker like this, uh, it's not much of an issue. I'll just reiterate, always buy as heavy a smoker as you can afford. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, now we'll uh, wait about an hour and a half before we touch anything because we want that crust to start to set. We want those seasonings to set on the outside of that brisket, which they're doing well now. See how it's dried off and the crust is set. It's starting to get some color on our bologna. The cracks are starting to open up. And now that the crust is set, hour and a half in, we can spray our brisket to keep it from drying out too much. I'm just going to use water today in a food safe spray bottle. You can use anything you want. You can use marinades, you can use apple juice, you can use apple cider vinegar, a mixture of whatever. It adds a little bit of flavor when you do those, but today we're just going to use water. This is another hour and a half later and you can see we're getting some darker color. I'm sorry, it's really difficult to focus in a smoking environment like that with my camera. I'll get better at this someday. Bologna is starting to get some good color on it. We're going to spray it also. We're just going to keep everything sprayed down. Just managing our fire at this time, people. That's all we're doing. Just keeping that temperature between 225 and 250. Good looking briskets. The brisket in front has a pretty high point on it. It's kind of like a little mountain. But they're going to cook at almost the exact same time. That's the color I like to look for, that dark mahogany color in the bologna when I know it's done. So we'll go ahead and slice it up. This is for a catered event I'm doing. So uh, I want to get it sliced and put in the fridge for reheating on chafing dishes later. And you can see how it looks once it's cut with those uh, score marks in the side and how much smoke got down in there. 
We'll just slice it all up, put it in pans, throw it in the fridge, and then we will pay attention to our brisket. Bologna uh, comes out as a very attractive product like that when you, when you quarter it and then score it like this. And I'll just reiterate, if you've never had smoked bologna before, please try it. Um, it, it tastes a lot different than, uh, than people think. All right, now we're about four and a half hours in. You can see that dark crust is really starting to form now. That's the flavor of your barbecue. And I've, every hour or so, maybe hour and a half, I've been spraying it down with water to keep it from drying out too much. And that, I think we're at six and a half hours here. Um, maybe six hours, I, I can't remember. It doesn't really matter. Whenever your crust looks like you want it to look like, and it's, it's kind of, the smoker's kind of done its job at this point, it's time to take it inside and wrap it. So we'll take these guys inside, wrap them in foil, throw them in the oven. It's beautiful brisket. It's got a lot of good crust on it. Came out really well. I was very pleased. I take a couple of uh, heavy-duty sheets of aluminum foil, put them down on the counter, and then I double wrap each one. Sometimes that crust is sharp enough it'll it'll pierce through thin aluminum foil, uh, and sometimes it'll even pierce through thick aluminum foil. So I use two two layers, and then I. Then, after it's wrapped up, I still put it in a pan before I put it in the oven. I don't want to have a flood in my kitchen from all the juices of these briskets when they're cooking. So after I've double wrapped this, I'll take my probe thermometer. I have, I have a little probe thermometer. I've shown you other videos that has a little remote wire on it so I can uh, monitor the temperature of the brisket without opening the oven and sticking a probe in there. So I go ahead and put it in the deepest part of that point of that muscle the thickest part. I put it in the middle of it so I'm getting the deepest internal temperature I can. And then we're going to stick them in a 265 degree oven and we're going to wait till we get about 203, 204, 205, somewhere around there. And I'll cook both briskets at the same time, of course. You can do this part in the smoker, of course, uh, but you know, you used to use up extra wood when we have an oven inside. The smoke can't get through the foil, so you're, you're really, really just uh, wasting, wasting wood, I think. So I like to do these in the oven if I'm not at a competition or, or some ways I can't get to one. This is also a good place to use an electric smoker on your porch. Put these pans inside there, and, uh, and they work great as an outdoor oven. These are those little magnet mount uh, probe thermometers. They have the, the remote there on a wire, and they also have a probe on them, so you can, you can use them either way. I have lots of them. So I'll set these guys up. It looks like the internal temperature of these briskets is 155, 160, somewhere around there, which is about usually where I pull them off. Some people cook them on the smoker a lot longer. They let the fat render all the way out, things like that. It's, you know, I, I find that, that this works great for me. All that fat renders inside this braise just fine. So there's our internal temperatures, and there's our oven temperature. And now we wait. I already pulled one of the briskets out. Uh, it was done a little earlier, and then I'm going to pull this one out now. It says 202.5 degrees in that deepest part. So what I like to do is go ahead and take a probe or a bamboo skewer or a toothpick, and I pierce through that foil and just make sure that it just is like butter. You want it just really soft, and this is. This one's perfect. I test it in several places here. If you don't do this and you pull them off at 203, 99% of the time you're going to be just fine. 203, 204. It just kind of depends. You, you want to kind of, I like to stick a probe in there and just make sure it's really, really soft. Now and then, sometimes you'll get a brisket that needs to cook a little longer. But like I said, this is, a, this is about the fundamentals, not about all the little things that could possibly happen. So don't worry about it too much. Now, I do want to pause this real quick here um, and, and tell you one of my biggest secrets for cooking brisket. Uh, one thing that I have found to be very important is the rest. We've talked before about how you have the smoke and then you have the cook or braise uh, where it gets soft uh, and cooks. And, and then you have the rest where that connective tissue and collagen and rendered fat inside uh, achieve a higher viscosity and set back up in the product. And so it's really juicy. I have found that I almost never cook brisket to eat it the same day. It's almost always for the next day because it takes so long. I mean, I, it's really hard to choreograph your brisket cooking for a, a 6 p.m. supper. 
you know, I have to get up at what time in the morning and is our things going to be done. So generally I cook them the day before and then, and then warm them back up. Um, because barbecue reheats great. Uh, there's a few exceptions to that. You know, I like ribs to be fresh, but they're a shorter cook. Uh, but with brisket and the rest, you can absolutely put this up on top of your oven or on the counter and vent it and let it rest for two hours. Uh, I, I put that in the cheat sheets, and we've talked about that before. That's perfectly fine. What I have found to be the very best thing to do is once it's done in the oven like this, um, like we just saw that it reached temperature, I open that oven door and let a little bit of that heat out. Then I put them back in the oven with the oven off and I leave them overnight. Um, they rest all night long and in the morning, 10, 11 hours later, they're still warm inside. Um, the food safety people out there would go crazy, I'm sure, saying they we reached too low of a temperature, but... We're talking about a product that has been salted heavily. It's been smoked. It's been cooked. And that entire time it's, that it's cooking up past the safe temperature, which was 160 degrees, it's clear up to 203 degrees. It's been wrapped that whole time in that salty brine. Nothing is going to happen inside there in 10 hours in an oven. So I leave them all night long. And then the next morning I like to slice them. And you're going to see what that does. Uh, it's, it works every time. So, uh, I would, I would go for a 10 hour rest overnight in the oven. If you can just turn the oven off and let it come down to temperature really, really slow. That meat will relax those uh, collagens that have been melt molten down into gelatin will set back up inside the product. And you're going to see uh, what that can look like. So here's that product and it is warm still. This is uh, 10 or 11 hours after I turned the oven off. Good long rest. It's got beautiful bark on it. These briskets came out great. They always come out just like this if you follow the rules that, that I just showed you. It's, it's really not that hard. It's mainly about managing your smoker temperature. So here's that completed brisket. Uh, this is a mess. Slicing up a brisket is a mess. On the left is the point and on the right is the flat. And we're going to cut against the grain. I'm going to slice that that flat against the grain all the way over to the halfway point because at the halfway point you start to get into the point muscle and then we'll turn the brisket 90 degrees because the point muscle runs uh, the fibers run the opposite direction and we'll finish it off it's very easy to do good smoke ring good rendering everything's perfectly tender and juicy a lot of good bark so here we go let's start making our slices now these briskets came out great. See that deep smoke ring? You can see all the rendered fat inside and on the top. That fat on the top is completely rendered and very soft. You want to use a really sharp knife and take your time doing this because that bark is very delicate. Um, it really helps to use uh, an electric knife if you have one, but today we're just going to use a sharp knife. I prefer one with a thin kerf like this. I don't want a really heavy like quarter inch thick chef's knife and just it pries everything apart. So there's our brisket. Just the, the, the lightest amount of pressure pulls it apart. And just take your time. And we're going to slice halfway, like I said, halfway across this brisket, because at that point in time, as you see, we'll start to start getting to where we're cutting into the point muscle. And since the point muscles fibers, like I said, run the opposite direction, we'll turn the brisket a little bit then. This stuff is so soft. We're going to go to about there. I am going to slice both of these briskets today to show you. We'll, we'll go over it all again, but in much higher speed here in a second. Uh, and when we when we slice that second brisket, it was the one with that really tall kind of mountainous point on it, uh, but it slices up just fine. And pretty slices. This is some really really tender, very moist brisket. I tasted this many times <laughs> during this video, and that butcher barbecue. Um, uh, injection that I used is very flavorful. It really helps these products out. And of course, the rust on the outside is, as I said before, my very favorite dry rub. That's some juicy brisket, guys. It really came out well. See the point muscle starting to come into this? 
Might get one or two more slices on here, but then it's time to turn this sucker 90 degrees, start slicing the other way. And you could either slice it or cube it. Once you get into that point, you can cube it like into, into burnt ends, chunks, or you can slice it. I'm going to do a little bit of everything with these so you guys can just see. It's a mess, but it's, it's a fun mess. So we'll cut this thing exactly in half so you can see what the inside of this looks like, and then I'll slice it all up. Letting it rest overnight gives you this kind of juiciness. See the fat is completely rendered in the middle there? That's the way brisket should look. You just don't find that in restaurants. You Maybe there are some out there. Uh, I've never been to one. I've heard of some that, that could possibly you know, serve this kind of brisket, but I guarantee you they're, they're few and far between and probably pretty expensive. You can do this every single time in your backyard. This is slicing the point, and later we'll cube some of it up. You can see it's very difficult to slice. It's very tender. All that fat is rendered. It's filled with gelatin. This is some really moist brisket. This came out really well. Good dark bark on the outside. Good exterior. You can check out that cutting board. This is a messy job. It always is. <laughs> just wants to fall apart on you. And that's a razor sharp knife. Like I said, try an electric knife if you have one. It's got, you still have to go slow. And now really quickly, I'm going to go through doing it again. But we're going to, we're going to kind of move through it a little faster. There's that big mountainous point. <laughs> so we'll slice this flat. This one was perfectly done also. Just a little tiny pull, pulls it right apart. Very moist. It's got a good bark on it. You have no complaints about either of these briskets. They're both very juicy. Good looking point. That's what you want. So there we have it. That's really about all we're going to go into. Um, you know, smoking brisket is not difficult. You guys can have this exact same product every time. If you're a beginner and you've never done this, you can you can come out with a product just like this. Just manage that fire. That's the hard part. It's not that difficult either. After you do it once or twice, uh, you'll see that it's just not that hard to replicate. So that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, start your fire early. Give it a good hour to burn down like that. Um, spray some oil on the outside of your firebox to keep it polymerized and seasoned so it doesn't, doesn't uh, if you're using an offset, so it doesn't rust away on you. Uh, dry rub and inject your briskets. Trim them off a little bit. Clean them up. Um, cook them five or six hours and, and then wrap them up and stick them in the oven until they're about 203, 204, 205 degrees. And then if you can and you have time, leave them in the oven all night long wrapped up like that with the, with the temperature off. And they'll slowly, slowly rest, and all that juice will set back up inside the product, and you'll end up with brisket that look just like that. So I uh, hope this wasn't too long, and I hope you guys have learned something, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.